In this lecture, we're going to look at a few useful functions available to work with strings. So earlier you learned about this built-in len function. This function is general purpose, so it's not limited to strings. Later, I will show you how to use this function with other kind of objects. But in Python, we have quite a few functions that are specific to strings. Let me show you. So here, if we type course dot, see, all these are functions available on strings. Now, in precise terms, we refer to these functions as methods. This is a term in object-oriented programming that you will learn about later in the course. For now, what I want you to take away is that everything in Python is an object, and objects have functions we call methods that we can access using the dot notation. So here, course, is an object. We use the dot notation to access its functions, or more accurately, methods. Let's take a look at a few of these methods. We have upper to convert a string to uppercase. Now let's print this and run the program. Here is what we get. Beautiful. Now note that the methods that you call here return a new string. So the original string is not affected. Let me show you. So print course, run the program one more time. Look, this is our original string, right? So course.upper returns a new string, a new value. We can store it in a variable like course, underline capital, like this. Now, to keep this demo simple and consistent, I'm going to revert this back and use a print statement. We also have the lower method to convert a string to lowercase. We also have title, which will capitalize the first letter of every word. So if our string was like this, when we call the title method, we get Python programming as you see here, okay? Another useful method is strip, and we use it to trim any white space at the beginning or end of a string. This is particularly useful when we receive input from the user. Let me show you. So let's imagine the user entered a couple of white spaces at the beginning of this string. When we call course.strip, those white spaces will be removed. Take a look. So note that in the first three examples, we have those white spaces, but in the last one, it is removed. So a strip removes the white space from both the beginning and end of a string. We also have L strip, which is short for left strip, and R strip, which is short for right strip. So it will remove the white space from the end of a string. If you want to get the index of a character or a sequence of characters in your string, you should use the find method. Let me show you. So course.find. So as an argument, here we pass another string. We can pass a character or a series of characters. Let's find the index of pro. Run the program. So the index of pro is nine. So if you start from zero here, all the way to nine, this is the index of pro, okay? Now, as I told you before, Python is a case sensitive language. So if I pass a capital P here, obviously we don't have these exact characters in our string. So let's see what we get. We get negative one. That means this string was not found in the original string. Another useful method is replace. So we call replace. With this, we can replace a character or a sequence of characters with something else. So let's say we want to replace all lowercase p's with j. With this, we get Jython programming, whatever that means. And finally, if you want to check for the existence of a character or a sequence of characters in your string, you can use the in operator. Let me show you. So print, rewrite an expression like this, pro in course. So this is an expression, as I told you before, an expression is a piece of code that produces a value. So this expression checks to see if we have pro in course. The difference between this expression and calling the find method is that the find method returns the index of these characters in our string. 
whereas this expression returns a boolean so it's a true or false let me show you so run the program we get the boolean true and finally we have the not operator and we use that to see if our string does not contain a character or a sequence of characters so let's change this to swift not in course when this expression is evaluated what do you think we're going to get well we don't have swift in this string so not in will return true let's take a look there you go so these are the useful string methods next we'll look at numbers